y'all, it's Jerry, and happy Monday to ya. Well, welcome back. Today, we've got a little tour for you. Um, we've had some casualties this past week, so I'm grieving to have to tell you about that. Um, but we're still trugging along, and so we're gonna show you a quick tour, and then I'm gonna share with you some harvest that we've had. I'm also gonna show you um, some of the tomato seeds that I'm setting up um, to get planted here, hopefully today. And um, then I had a request from um, one of my subscribers, and I also follow her now on Instagram, Mrs. Lopez, and she asked me a while back if I could do a video about bugs. So that's what we're gonna do today because I'm all about the bugs, about the bugs, no troubles. Well, anyway, let's get to that part of the video. We've had a lot of casualties with the tomatoes this week, so they got moved from over there to the patio. So we moved the patio table over this way because this one particular plant that we kept on the patio looks great, whereas the rest of them uh, just look real bad. And um, so hopefully this is going to be a better spot for them. Um, the top looks good, but um, down here at the bottom, there's a lot of suffering going on. This one is struggling really bad, and we lost the great white completely. The loofah are um, looking better. I kind of shortened the length of the shade cloth so that um, these newer plants would stop reaching so much. This is still kind of struggling, but then there's new vines coming off that I've kind of directed in there. So who knows? We're just trying to give it water and keep an eye on it every single day so i haven't done any of my chores with the mint or the uh oregano and i'm not keeping up really good with getting the flowers off of these mints so i need to do that this is the great white and it's just uh it was one of my healthiest plants and it's just completely done. And these that we left over here are actually not doing too bad. Um, and, and they're green, they're not suffering in any way. This has got some suffering going on. The strawberry's okay. Um, and this is on its way out. Over here in this bed, um, we've got one of our um, pumpkins coming up there and um, I believe that's probably a zinnia based on the pattern that we used coming across here. And these pumpkins were the first to actually come up. So this one's getting another set of leaves. So it was like that one was first, second, and that one over there was um, last. And I believe that's another flower too. This little thing came out to smile at us. These beans here are actually, um, this week they've been kind of reaching into here. So they're starting to get ready to trellis up. However, None of these came up, so there's just something about this area. I don't know that the beans don't seem to like. And this bed here is really going crazy. I'm dominated chiefly by the <laughs> butternut over there. This tomato is um, doing a little bit better now that it's standing up more. This pepper, I am ready to just cut it completely back um, because look at this one. This is the one that I took everything off. It's on its way to Happy Town. I think it's about time to let the old collard green go here. Uh, the watermelons are still doing kind of okay. The Anazi bean is uh, super happy too. A lot of new growth right there. And down in here you can see that the other cantaloupes are doing happy. Um, some more Anazi beans down here. And this is kind of a side view. This okra is really about to get crazy with life and I almost wish I had another okra there. The sweet potato bed, I, I'm about to have a free cage. So I'm gonna come over here and put this in a cage. And, and I, I don't even mind if the sweet potatoes crawl on the cage. And we, everything is growing great, um, but we found a new pest in the garden. Um, it looks like a hornworm, but it's actually a, um, sweet potato hornworm that's what has been eating up the leaves so i've been trying to get more vigilant about coming out here and looking 
for those worms on there. Um, but otherwise, this is doing happy. A quick glance at the kids' pumpkin patch. I'm going to do my best to get out here super, super early in the morning and um, figure out some way to prop up this mass of things. Um, we've had another casualty over here, too. It's actually with the um, cantaloupes. And so we harvested all the cantaloupes that are on the vine. I'll show you that right here. Okay, so here are all the cantaloupe that we had um, going on, you know, the plant that's passed on. And here's the one that had the weird thing. And when we brought these in, like overnight, it started to do this. So I'm gonna actually put these in a brown paper bag and let them finish ripening even though this one feels kind of soft so i wonder if but it doesn't it doesn't really have a smell yet um so i don't know i'll check them every day um but we're gonna cut this one open in just a second and i think this will give us a good idea of what we you know what i think about this one that feels kind of soft so i'm gonna kind of just cut at an angle oh so yeah, that's, it's just kind of rotted on the inside. So I don't know if it rotted last night, but otherwise that looks kind of good. So I think I might open up this one because I read that you have to really be careful with not letting these get too ripe. So, and I also learned that um, sometimes the plant will die when um, they're ripe. So, um, yeah, I think it's important that we go ahead and cut this one open and see what's going on. And it looks beautiful. And it doesn't have a really strong smell. Uh, so that's why I think probably these would maybe do a little bit better in the paper bag. But um, uh, that's a, <laughs> it's a pretty color. Girls. Look, here's our first cantaloupe. We grew it? Yeah. Neat. Is that the one that had like a little bit of that like kind of weird stuff? Oh, Ooh. that one's that one right there. There's black in it. Oh, is that a bad one? Well, I think it went bad last night when, um, because the crack started to do something weird. Oh, uh, because it wasn't growing maybe? I don't know. Something happened when we brought it inside, like the temperature change or something caused it to, I don't know, do something. Oh, that's yeah. great. Here. Let Come me here. Those in the trash Come can. here. I want you guys to try this out. So the girls are going to test it out and tell me what they think. <laughs> How's it taste? Kind of sweet or? It's not as sweet as other cantaloupes that we don't grow. I'm saying, I would say that it's a really good cantaloupe. I would say salt would be good with it, but it's not super sweet, so that's why salt would be good with it. Okay. Um, so right now, um, it looks like everything in, the, in the, the cantaloupes and melons is kind of passing away. Um, there's a big awkward, oh well there's actually two, um, Armenian peppers in there. That's kind of soft so I need to take it. This okra is really happy and this wild Texas cherry is kind of being supported by the uh, Armenian cucumber. So we don't know what happened other than just maybe heat and unhappiness while the cantaloupes passed away. I need to do um, a little maintenance in here because we harvested, oh, the okra leaves are prickly, um, but we harvested that blue hubbard and so I need to clean out the mother plant and these two okra plants are going crazy. There's a nice little okra right there. This butternut's happy. Looks like this kale needs some water. Um, there's also another butternut and squash that's over here. So the tomatillas and the uh, Armenian cucumber are really kind of fighting with everything else. That's looking okay. But like I said, a lot of the melon and cantaloupe are going away. It looks like this is finally going to seed. So we're gonna have some openings and that's good because we've got some tomatoes and different things that we wanna plant. Um, so I've gotta do some maintenance out here, like I said, when it's really cooler in the day. 
see look at that those melons over there have got flowers on them so but there's bed one and here's the blue hubbard um it was in bed one and um you know its mother plant had been struggling i think it's interesting that right here it's kind of starting to turn blue the longer that it's been sitting on the counter um but we've just been letting it hang out this is the spaghetti squash from bed three um that was you know that had been on there a while and i still haven't cooked with it i've kind of <laughs> been waiting for it to have something else to go with it and this is the i guess a spaghetti squash that was um in bed two and that bed just kind of keeps having issues and i thought i'd go ahead and rescue it and let it kind of come in and cure so this week i got over to the seed library and picked up some seeds um i've got a beet here I've got some Swiss chard. I've never grown Swiss chard from seed. I've only bought the transplants and that's why this year I don't have any Swiss chard in my bed. So um, this is one that I've never done before, um, but I think they look really cool is the Cole Hawbry. Um, here's some kale. Um, I've got red Russian, but I've never done the Lacento. And then I lucked into some of the yellow pear tomatoes and this is um the purple tomatilla and so it's after july 15th so it's um time that i can actually do some more tomatoes so i'm gonna start some ace 55s i never got any of these growing in time for um last season but i think they should probably be a pretty short season variety so i'm gonna do the brad's atomic grape i'm gonna try another run at the indigo apple and then the great white is 75 days but i loved it and i'm just gonna hope for the best and see if i can get it to come through okay so i've used these things over and over to soak seeds for different things so i've got um like you can see all my seeds in there and um now i'm just gonna fill it up with some water and um, i'm gonna put them out on the patio where it's nice and warm and um that way they'll kind of soften up and maybe this will help them germinate better. I think I'm gonna run most of my seedlings outside. Um, I'm gonna take care of them on the patio. Okay, so I've had um, a couple of different requests, obviously for um, more information about pests and bugs in the garden. So I'm gonna start out talking about the bad guys and move into the beneficial um, bugs. So the first thing I'm going to start out with are aphids. And unfortunately, aphids uh, come in a lot of different colors. You can have green aphids, you can have black aphids, you can have white ones, you can have yellow ones. Uh, there's even some red ones down here. So that's a tough thing is that because they can come in a variety of colors, um, it might seem as though uh, there are a bunch of different things, but you can kind of get into a familiar, familiarity with their shape. Um, they all kind of look like this, and they tend to cluster a lot together, like here in this picture right here. Um, now, aphids are definitely um, something that we see come into the garden during stress times. Um, so, a plant that's stressed out, a plant that you're trying to grow out of season, uh, all of those things are a wonderful, inviting thing for the aphids. Now, Aphids, in my opinion, the easiest way to get rid of aphids is to spray them off, um, just like here in this picture right here. Um, spray them off with a fast spraying strong hose. Um, they don't have a way to fly, um, but unfortunately they can form a relationship with the ants and the ants will farm them um, and a kind of a slave program because when the aphids eat and suck from the plant they um, you know their waste 
product is sweet and um, the ants love it so they're willing to give them a ride back up onto your plants um, but my best course of action and suggestion is to just keep spraying them off um, if you've got one plant that they're consistently attracted to I have a tendency to leave that plant because if it's gonna leave alone everything else um, and only focus on that. Um, sometimes that's happened to me with a sunflower before and I'm okay with that because the sunflower is still going to do life. It's a lot more strong. The stalk is really tough. It's not the same as an aphid going crazy on one of your tomato plants. So these are um, kind of aphids that you commonly more see on your plants. Here's a look at um, what their eggs look like. So they can be these little tiny here, a little yellow here, um, the like white ball here in this picture is a great example of um, what their little egg looks like versus the first stage of the aphids right there. Um, so we talked about aphids and ants. Um, now ants sometimes in the garden it can be seen as pollinator friends. Um, okra actually kind of produces its own ne nectar that um, releases from the patola of the leaves and um, closer to the flowers and so it's thought to believe that the okra does that actually um, to bring in an ant that will protect it from other types of attacks in the garden. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the tomato hornworm. And um, that's what these guys look like. And um, they're obviously um, from the family of a moth. And uh, so the moth um, buries down into the ground about twice a year. Um, well, really, once the hornworm is done, you know, it will, once it gets to its fattest point, it goes down into the earth and it hangs out. And then, like I said, twice a year, it's going to come out as this moth. It's going to lay eggs again, and the whole cycle is going to start over. So the tomato hornworm really loves nightshade plants like your tomatoes, your peppers, eggplants. Um, if you see hornworms like this, um, that's okay because that means um, another, usually probably a parasitic wasp has come along and laid eggs on your hornworm, and when they're... Um, eggs hatch, they're actually going to just um, kill and destroy the hornworm. Uh, so the best thing um, to do when you start to see hornworm attacks, um, and the, a good example is this. You can see where there were formerly leaves all over this plant. So this is going to be one of your best indicators is all of a sudden a big part of your plant has been chewed off. Another thing is that their poop is pretty identifiable. So if they're up here and you see poop marks down here like little black pebbles that kind of look like that or even the black on their body, um, that will get you to look up and see that this chubby guy is up here eating and pooping his life away. Uh, so you really just want to pick these off. Um, a lot of people like to feed them to um, their lizards. Um, you can, people actually sell them. And I think, what is it, like a sugar gliders love them too. So if you want to get into that business, you could always... Um, try that out. Otherwise, um, you could also put them in a jar um, with um, some leaves if your children want to watch the life cycle of a hornworm take place. But otherwise, get them off your plants. Don't flip out if your plant gets eaten up a lot. Um, it will come back and recover. Um, so once you get one, it's really important to kind of become vigilant and make sure you're getting into your plant and checking, checking it on a regular basis because um, these start out really small, but in a matter of time, um, they can completely just um, decimate your plant. So that's the tomato hornworm. And now I have come to a new hornworm in my garden, and that is the sweet potato hornworm. And 
Uh, you're going to see the same thing, lots of holes in your leaves. Um, turn the leaves over, you'll see the little small green baby uh, caterpillars that I guess can eventually um, come into kind of a purplish pink looking color um, as they grow because they're going to make this um, spotted pink hawk moth up here, um, which is really pretty. But again, um, the process to get to this beautiful moth is going to... Um, end up eating up the better part of your sweet potato leaves. So you just really want to, again, once you start seeing the the holes, become really vigilant with checking your leaves every night and removing those little worms and bugs. Now, another um, pest that I've been seeing a lot of people in my Facebook group talk about is the... Um, is the uh, are pill bugs so a lot of people are having issues with pill bugs in their gardens and this is I see it a lot with people who do a lot of heavy mulching um, that's because the pill bug really likes to feed on um, things that are decaying so it likes to get under old wet leaves or old um, wet mulch and furrow down in there but unfortunately if there's not some type of barrier um, between the soil and your plant um, sometimes they'll start to eat at the roots of your plants so a lot of people um, in my Facebook group I believe use um, oranges like orange pills in their garden um, there are some solutions that you can make up I think uh, that's like a little bit of beer and um, uh, some type of yeast I can double check on that if you're interested um, that you can kind of set out there um, that will attract them away from your plants as well um, so that right there are kind of the gist of the bad guys that I'm going to talk about today and now I want to talk about good guys in the garden and the first one that I'm going to go over is um, the ladybug and with the beneficial bugs I really want to also highlight some of their life cycle so that when you understand that like this is what a ladybug eggs look like then you don't freak out thinking that maybe this is some type of bad bug eggs and because something as cute as this ladybug goes through a stage of looking as crazy as this little alligator looking bug I think it's important to to understand these life stages this way you're not coming in and killing off the babies that were perfectly laid to come in and eat up the bad bugs um, because a ladybug kind of perfectly lays her eggs underneath the leaf where she has the expectation that as soon as they hatch into this larval stage that there'll be plenty of things for her baby to eat in the form of aphids or any type of mites that might be present. So this crazy looking alligator thing is going to be your best friend um, when it comes to the aphids. So that's again another reason why I say spray off aphids because if you're spraying some type of um, pest control, whether it be organic or not, there's a good chance that you can hurt these babies which are right there ready to come in and do some work for you. So once um, the little alligator goes through its 20 to 30 day life cycle, it's going to kind of turn into something that looks like this and it's going to kind of molt hang out this way and then boom go into the beautiful um, ladybug that it is so uh, again I just wanted to share with you all of the stages of this wonderful beneficial bug I've um, got um, I've uh, got also another picture here to just kind of show you um, what these um, ladybug um, babies look like and the next thing that we're going to talk about is actually um, the lace wings and this is what a lace wing looks like and we see them a lot on the patio at night in the beginning of summer um, so they kind of look like a fly a little bit um, this is really they're, they're not even this big this is really magnified um, so they look like a fly, um, but they're they're a, kind of a tinge of green, and they have these really thin wings. That's the name, lace wings. And just like the, uh, just like the 
ladybug, I also want to kind of go through um, what the life cycle of a lacewing looks like because the eggs, as you can see um, from this picture over here, um, they look kind of odd, you know. Um, they just look like they're almost hanging from a little bit of a web string from this plant here. And again, that could look like something that is not positive in any way. But if you're having an aphid problem, again, because lace wings will help with the aphids. But if you have an aphid problem and you see these on your plant, then it's easy to say, okay, if I can be patient, then here in another couple of days, these lace wings are going to hatch and um, be a good friend to me in the garden. Um, so that's, uh, that's the lace wings. And then the next one that I'm going to talk about is the praying mantis. And um, we'll look at a couple of pictures here, too. Um, the praying mantis kind of makes its own odd-looking, kind of papery-looking cocoon. Um, this is another um, version of that cocoon. Uh, but the praying mantis, um, you can also, like ladybugs, you can sometimes buy these in your nursery. But if you see the telltale signs of this egg casing, again, patience is on your side because as soon as these come out of their egg casing, they're going to be hungry, ready to eat. And nine times out of ten, um, these nymphs or these firstborn babies of these bugs are much more voracious eaters than even their adult counterparts. Um, so be on the lookout there for the praying mantis. Now, I don't, um, I want to get a Another one that I didn't have a ready picture up, and these guys are really so tiny, it's um, it's it's going to be hard to show you a picture. But um, much like the little uh, what we saw earlier, the the little sacks that were on the back of the horn hornworms back. Um, those come from this here. This is the parasitic wasp and it's really, really, really so tiny. Um, but you can see here it's poking into the body of this aphid and again it's laying its eggs inside of that aphid. So within a matter of time when those eggs hatch it's going to completely destroy the aphid and it actually <laughs> leaves behind um, aphid aphid mummies. Um, so that's another thing is if your aphids look gray and kind of like um, ash, um, that's usually because they that's just the, the corpse, the shell of the corpse left over um, by this wily little um, parasitic wasp. So if you if you see something like a little wasp that is darting in your plants, um, be grateful. Uh, maybe offer them a cold drink um, because otherwise they're there to do some big work for you. Um, now I want to um, I want to reflect on this um, photo here for a minute um, just to give you some more identification with some eggs. Um, these are pest eggs. This is the squash bug, the stink bug, the leaf-footed bugs, and the three-lined potato beetle bugs. Um, in addition to that, here's a look at what some butterfly babies look like. So this is the groof fritillary on a passion vine. This is a giant swallowtail on citrus, a monarch on some milkweed, and a black swallowtail on what looks like maybe some dill. Um, so that's another good lesson there um, for identifying some eggs, both in our um, the bad guy group, the beneficials, and the butterflies. Now, uh, another thing I want to discuss that we see a lot here in Arizona, especially if either you have a lot of weeds in your yard somewhere or your neighbors have a lot of weeds, you can um, see the milkweed bug. Now, the milkweed bug is um, just kind of an annoying nuisance. It's not really bothering our plants so much as the western or eastern box elder bugs. But you see they look very similar to what the milkweed bug looks like, um, but the big difference is how the orange lines out on them. So these guys are the bad guys because um, much like the other bad guys, 
they're notorious for sucking um, the juices from your plants and um, making life hard for you. So now let's look at this. Okay, again, um, another um, pests over here, the squash bug and um, some eggs, the leaf-footed bug and the stink bug, which is different from these guys over here. They look similar. The assassin bug is beneficial because it eats other bugs. Um, the leaf hopper assassin, same thing, and then the yellow belly bee assassin bug. So assassin means what it says, but it's not assassinating your plants, it's assassinating other insects. So again, this is a big reason why I just am not that reactive to bugs, because nature is a lot more harponic than we give it credit for, and if we let her do her work, a lot of times um, she'll do the right thing for us. Um, so in addition to these um, different bugs, there's always different things that you can plant um, to deter the bugs, and I'm not going to get into all of that today, um, but I did want to share with you some of the top bad guys bugs in the garden and um, some of the top good guy bugs in the garden so that you'll start to become familiar with um, who to leave alone and who to watch for because even if you see a bad guy um, then the good guy might not be too far behind them so I hope you enjoyed that well I hope that you enjoyed um, the tour and uh, watching me set up the seeds for the tomatoes some of the things that we harvested and I definitely hope that the bug segment was helpful to you and um, if anything it's also going to be hopefully a reference that you can come back to um, as you encounter these different things in your yard um, but if you have any request for um, videos that you'd like to see to help you um, specifically with your low desert garden or um, maybe another garden I could help you with but if you got any requests like that don't ever hesitate to put them down in the comments or send me a message on Instagram and I'll be happy to oblige as much as I can um, but I want to thank you so much for um, coming back every week and checking out what we're doing over here hoping that we're constantly being an inspiration to get you going and growing some of your own food and I hope you have the best day ever and thanks again so much